Hey, um, I want to talk to you today about these three boards right here. Um, this board is the W806. Um, received it a little over a month ago, and it is a 52 pin chip and has 44 um, GPIOs that you can use. It's ARM based, and it comes from um, Winter Micro. And no Wi Fi on it. Now, this is the Wi Fi version of that same, well, not the same chip, but the similar chip. Same in the series. And this is the W801. And it um, has the same amount of pins as this one, the W806, um, but it has Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Um, so I'm going to get into that one a little. Um, probably do a, a pretty good video on getting it set up soon and now this is the lua t os board um, and it is using an air 101 processor but um this processor come to find out is a winter micro processor and this is the w800 which is the 32 pin version of the w800 series so no wi-fi no bluetooth it's just gpio um it is rebranded by by for for the lua t um os organization or company whatever they are i'm not sure and um we'll go into a little more details here now this chip um comes with The Lua TOS burnt into the firmware already. Um, I myself, I use Linux. Um, I could not get it connected to the firmware image. Um, it would connect to the serial port and I would see some garbage, but I've never, and that was kind of at random there, um, but I could never actually connect to the image. So I um, looked for another way. This is actually using the SDK. To fly set LED there, so um, may and re, main reason I bought this board was to try to, to try the Lua TOS stuff, but it's all heavily Chinese um, documentation and everything, and the tools that they have outside for interfacing with it um, are um, Windows based, and I tried to install it through Wine, didn't work, so gave up on it. And, drop back and use the SDK. But that took a little bit to figure out what SDK it was because at that point in time, I didn't know what that chip was. But now I do. <clears throat> now, this board has Wi-Fi and this is the W800 again, excuse me, W801, W800 here. And the W801 has Bluetooth, low energy and Wi-Fi. Um, so quite a big board. Got your antenna here. They do give an option for uh, the IMEX connector there. So you can move your resistor over and put an IMEX connector there. So that's a good thing. That's nice. I wish a lot of ESP boards did that. Um, my main draw to this board was just the amount of I.O. you have with it, plus having Bluetooth and, and Wi-Fi already on the board. <clears throat> It has eight LEDs that you can use for status or animation or whatever. Um, a boot button, excuse me, a boot button and a reset button. But the reset buzz button doesn't work. I don't know why. I haven't looked into it any detail. But um, the SDK, I got the SDK working and that was actually relatively easy since I knew how I had learning experience from this guy. Um, but the SDK is automatically set up to reset the board um, on flash, so it's not a problem. And I may put a reset button across here um, or figure out what's wrong with that one. I'm, not, I'm just really not sure. Now, um, real quick on this one again, the W806, um, I've showed the SDK for it. It uses a HAL-based SDK, you know, hardware abstraction layer, you know, so you're not directly 
well, you're directly talking to the hardware, but you're using um, extraction, um, um, excuse me, extraction um, structures and, and unions to get to the registers and not, not directly addressing the record, re, um, registers inside your code. But you could do that if you wanted to. Um, these two actually use the same SDK and they are a different SDK from this one, um, which I find eh, kind of a pain in the rear, but um, I guess it's not a big problem. Yeah. Again, this is how these two use a TLS SDK. Um, I don't know what TLS means. I mean, I know what it means in the real world. It's, you know, um, transport um, layer security. But, you know, that's the Internet world. But they use this and it looks like a, a, a function set that they wrote several years back for the W600 or maybe even before that one. So TLS on these, and that is a hardware extraction layer too. It, it basically does the same thing, just a different function set. So, and the, the actual SDK is pretty extensive, especially for this guy right here with all the <clears throat> network stuff. It's got encryption handling um, and things like that built in um, that you can reference. Um, these two both have a floating point unit, I think, if I remember right, built in. Um, this guy, it does not have floating point, um, but it uses the TLS like this, so it's a, a subset of, of this. This is basically a, a GPIO chip. I mean, you could hook a ESP up to it through a UART or do I2C, something like that. Now, Let's get back to this one real quick. Um, I don't recommend getting this chip at all or, or this board. Um, it's kind of limited. Um, it does have two megs of flash, you know, which is good. Um, but it, um, and it has, the, the all three have the same amount of RAM, which is 288K. So two megs of flash, 288K. Um, just GPIO, you got some interrupts, you got some PWMs, I think there's five or six of those. Um, you got your UART, and they're all, all three flashable via the UART through um, USB-C connector. Um, but um, outside that, it doesn't offer anything at all. Um, you would be much better getting uh, another, you know, ARM type based chip or, or ESP instead of this. Um, um, one of the, the downfalls I don't like of it is um, you've got an I2C channel, but it's, it's um, master only. You can't do any slave communication with it. So that's not a good thing I, for, for me anyway, because there's several instances where I use a master and a slave um, channel to, to do work. So you, you you can only do master only, no slave. Um, it's got USB. I think you have two USBs on it. Excuse me, not USB. UARTs on it. And um, SBI. And I think you may be able to do the PS RAM expansion on this one I'm, I'm not sure but these two you I know you can so you can um, take your RAM hook a PS uh, SBI PS RAM chip up and expand it up to 64 meg uh, where it'll use it internally um, once you configure it um, which is really nice but again I would say say this chip is a a passer don't even go with it um, this one, if you just need I.O., um, it's got lots of I.O. I, I believe on these ARM chips, every pin can be set as an interrupt. I might be wrong on that, but um, I think that's the case. Um, so lots of I.O. here, but here you got lots of I.O. and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And that's really what I wanted. When I originally got this, ordered this, I wanted this. But um, I could not find it on 
AliExpress or anywhere for sale. So I got this guy. And then about four weeks ago, um, this became available. So shortly after I got this one. So I ordered it. And so I'm starting to get into to playing with it. So, but anyway, um, my main points here are they are in the same family by what the manufacturer has. But um, uh, HAL SDK, which is their newer SDK, it looks like. This uses their older TLS SDK, but it's pretty large and has lots of functions for, you know, the Wi-Fi and everything. And then this uses the same thing, but again, I'd say don't buy this one. So skip the Lua Air 101 chip or the W800 chip and go for the 801 or the 806. So that's my take on it anyway. I'll have some more information on this one, some demos and the SDK setup and everything soon. Thanks.